Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And it's no secret that by now the shine of this update has worn off. People are already starting to see that it was pretty shallow to begin with. And although we did get two really good reworks and War Tiger, uh, the rest of the update is basically nowhere to be found. And of course, Dispatch is just relegated to a bunch of hilarious screenshots of people either bemoaning the crappy rewards or trying to justify them through gritted teeth. So what I decided I would do is let's piss some people off. I'm going to give you my top seven hottest, most scalding takes in Marvel Future Fight. Hot takes are intentionally meant to be controversial. So these are not necessarily my most prioritized, beloved opinions about the game. I'm not espousing these to people whenever I can. But uh, yeah, they are things that I do think about from time to time. So starting us off with number seven, Shadowland is kind of decent. And I kind of didn't want to put this one on the list because I want them to rework Shadowland. So I don't want them to see this and be like, oh, Shadowland is fine. Alex likes Shadowland. Other players like Shadowland. Let's just leave it as it is. I know my opinion is not the only one that matters for sure, but I just didn't want to include it at all. But I, I like there's just something about Shadowland. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's because I, I, I played the game since the beginning um, and just Shadowland was so hype when it came out. So hype. I cannot tell you how hyped this game mode was when it first came out. Obviously, nowadays, it's much more boring in the fact that it has not changed in so many years. But still, it's the only place where I can use my entire roster in a day if I want to, right? Or two days. It's one of the only game modes that you can play solo over the course of several days. Like, it just has so many unique factors to it. Up next, I think MFF should be more restrictive with content and this sort of goes hand in hand with the shadowland thing and with world boss legend but basically you know how we complain about characters or we highlight characters for how they can do the restrictions in world boss legend oh they can do this stage and that stage and yada 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 i think we need more of this but just in other content that's right i think there needs to be more restrictions to further reinforce and, and and force players to build out their roster wide and to value their roster right the, the value of the roster is just dependent on how many different characters you are forced to build right so having more restrictions and more frequent restri restrictions in different game modes in my opinion would achieve that i know this is an unpopular opinion but yeah at number five using a rage ctp does not mean there is no skill to playing the character. Now, this one might actually not be that hot of a take, even though it has, is at number five, but this conversation used to be very popular in the Marvel Future Fight communities when the Rage CTP was released back in like 2018 or 19 or something like that, maybe 2019. Uh, and basically the argument was, well, if you have to proc with a CTP of energy or a CTP of destruction or an obelisk, then there's timing involved. But with a CTP of Rage and later on a CTP of Judgment, there is no timing involved because you just activate the buff for the full amount of time and then you can just quote unquote spam your skills and abilities however much you want, uh, of course, pursuant to the, to the cooldown being available. Uh, and I, I just don't think it's true. I do not. I do think, just to clarify the, the, the statement a little bit, I do think there are characters who are easier to play and harder to play with similar builds. Like, for example, a lot of people see Magneto as just purely spam, or a lot of people say that Scarlet Witch is just purely spam. Uh, again, both built with basically identical CTPs. Um, but I do think there is some nuance to the uh, skill rotations, and I don't think that it's purely spam. Coming in at number four, I don't think MFF has too much autoplay. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> But I, I genuinely don't don't think so. And I actually see people saying this more frequently nowadays. So I do believe that this is a pretty hot take. This why this is this cracked the top five. Um, but yeah, I, I think that people are frustrated that multiverse invasion takes 20 minutes. And I think that as people spend more time in the game and they basically, I don't know, I guess they watch the autoplay content more, they just get tired of it. So what I think you're seeing with more and more people giving this opinion that, that there's too much autoplay in the game it's not that there is too much autoplay or they're adding more autoplay because they're not it's just that the players who have who started the game and, and built their way up to where they can auto a lot 
are at that point where the autoplay is starting to irritate them. I'm obviously way past that infraction point or inflection point or whatever it's called. And I honestly just like watching the autoplay at some at some points. Like it's to me, it's, it's entertaining. Or I have this crazy uh, power where I can just not watch it autoplay. I just, to me, it always blows my mind when people complain about the amount of autoplay because not, none of, like, no human on earth is that popular or that important that you need to be on your phone that many hours out of the day, right? And there's for sure moments where you could autoplay and just have your phone sitting somewhere while you're doing something else. I'm not sure how controversial this one is going to be, but I think that one of the sneak peeks in every update should just be a sneak peek. It should not be a reveal. Technically, all of the sneak peeks we have are not sneak peeks. They're reveals because they show you exactly what you are getting down to whether or not the character is getting an upgrade to their base, you know, i.e. tier 2 to tier 3, tier 3 to tier 4, etc. So I actually would want once per update if they just released like a silhouette uh, or, or some sort of like uh, maybe a clue, a puzzle that maybe hinted at certain aspects of the character without revealing exactly who the character was. So like, for example, pretend that the, the number, like this sneak peek for Miles, instead of it being a sneak peek for Miles specifically, and we knew it was Miles and we knew it was a tier three, what if it was just some sort of sneak peek that hinted that a, a Spider-Verse character was good, gonna be you know coming to the game or was gonna be getting an upgrade so then people are like oh is it gonna be miles is it gonna be spider gwen is it gonna be spider man and people start speculating on it and it just creates a little bit more hype than just having like this is exactly what you're getting and don't expect anything else i don't know that's just me i'm not saying all the sneak peeks should be like that but if one of the sneak peeks was like that it would be fine it wouldn't even make that much of a difference in most cases because a lot of the updates already are thematic i don't think mff is that expensive for a mobile game and i know this is one of my craziest takes but it's actually not the craziest on this list it's number two now here's the thing i'm not going to get into a big conversation about why i think this game is not that expensive obviously it, it operates on the word expensive and what your definition is of expensive and that is tied to how much money you make so if you don't make any money, the game is really expensive. If you're a teenager and you get an allowance from your parents, you can't afford any of this stuff unless your parents are millionaires, billionaires, and they're giving you hundreds of dollars a week for your allowance. My mom gave me $5 a week for my allowance, you know, 10, 15, year, 15 years ago uh, when I was a kid, you know, when I was a teenager. So obviously $5 a week, I mean, $5 a week's not bad by, by, uh, by MFF standards. I could buy a Stark stash every two weeks kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it really just depends on that. But you know, Further, further to that and just comparing mobile games to each other, that's where Marvel Future Fight comes in for me as an, an inexpensive game, right? Like I was able to not only build a roster, but also I was able to make content without spending that much money on the game. And if you talk to content creators who play literally any other game, they have to spend so much money just to collect the characters in order to review them not even to max them out right to max them out would be a, a whole other level a whole other tier of whaling but just the way that the game is designed it's designed as an equipment gotcha rather than a character gotcha and thankfully you guys are not interested very much in the equipment side of things you're interested in the character side of things and that side of things is much cheaper to uh, collect than most other games Obviously, compared to like a triple A game like Elden Ring, this game is is obviously not worth it. Like if I could only spend $60 in this game or buy Elden Ring, I would buy Elden Ring. No questions asked. I'm not a mobile game simp who's just like, oh, mobile games. Like I, I'm, I, you know, I have I have a solid head on my shoulders, you know, most days. Um, but as far as just comparing MFF to the mobile game space, not comparing it to all games, uh, it is definitely one of the cheapest games I think I've ever seen. Uh, and maybe we'll, we will ever see because they're probably going to trend to getting more expensive as, as the future, uh, you know, as we progress into the future, sadly. Here we go. My number one most hottest, scaldingest take in Marvel Future Fight. We don't need two custom gear slots or as they're commonly referred to, two CTP slots. We don't. We don't. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this. It's just my opinion. It's not the opinion of all the players. But here's the thing. 
most players are not going to take advantage of two ctp slots on every single character this is the reality right whether it's whether the two slots are free or whether you have to pay crystals or whatever like most players are just not they don't have the resources right not not every most players are not holding this many ctps in, in waiting they're not holding this many obelisks in waiting so even if they were to release the two ctp slot thing you're only going to take advantage of it on select characters especially if it costs money or it costs crystals to unlock the second slot the way that it does cost crystals to unlock the second and third iso sets so what's going to happen when they when they introduce two c if they were to introduce two ctp slots is that all of the most popular most meta characters like gene gray they're all just going to become exactly the same every single player is going to have the best pve ctp and the best pvp ctp on gene gray and then every single time you see a gene gray out in the wild in pve or pvp you'll know that they have the exact same build as everyone else so what's funny is that on, on the outside you think oh two ctp slots that's going to increase the variety of builds people are going to have so many different builds for characters it's going to be so interesting that's actually not how it works what's probably going to happen in my opinion is you're going to see the variance and variety shrink because players have the flexibility now to basically complete the build on both sides right so the, the value of hybrid characters would decrease the value of hybrid ctps like the destruction would decrease uh, which is bad but on top of that you would just it would just be so monotonous and so boring because you would know every single gene you see in pvp would have a pvp build and every single player would be able to also take their gene into pve and do really well whereas now you're forced to choose so we do have more variety again i know this is probably my least my least enjoyable take which is also funny because uh when we first started asking for two ctp slots i was also saying we should get two ctp slots but uh it's a hot take for a reason so yeah hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think thank you so much for watching what are your hot takes on this game and i'll see you in the next one take care